I know people, Roman, and you probably do too, they do all of their banking, their, even their investment transactions, things of that nature. They're doing it right here on this device. And the moment yeah. this, this device isn't connected to the network, they're, they're disconnected from things like their money, their transactions, their stock portfolio, all of this activity. And it can be very, very unsettling when something like that happens. We are joining uh, everyone, all of the uh, the people watching us right now on the Facebooks, the YouTubers, and uh, we're having a bit of a conversation. I got my friend Roman here, and earlier today we were talking about you know this little thing that happened uh, in Canada. Uh, one of the largest telecommunications networks went down. Um, you may have heard about it in the news. There's this little little company called Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it, it seemed to create a little bit of havoc with a lot of people um, not having access to their phones, their communication devices, the network, the their ability to interact, getting online, watching YouTube, all the things that we do on a daily basis because we're basically glued to, you know, one of these little devices pretty much all day long. And, uh, you know, it, it definitely created a lot of chaos. And I think for many people, it created um, some eye-opening moments for them to recognize the system, the system that we work within, we have a lot of faith and a lot of dependency on that system, just in the telecommunications area. But even like, you know, nowadays, I know people, Roman, and you probably do too, they do all of their banking, their, even their investment transactions, things of that nature. They're doing it right here on this device. And the moment yep. this, this device isn't connected to the network, they're, they're disconnected from things like their money, their transactions, their stock portfolio, all of this activity and it can be very very unsettling when something like that happens what what have you discovered in conversations you've had with people yeah thank you richard uh, you know definitely i noticed that uh it was something like out of ordinary where uh, when canada actually went in a panic mode basically because the mo uh, like lots of people lots of canadians got disconnected from the real world Meaning that even though they could do some things, but they were restricted in the other things. For example, you know, ATM machines got disconnected. You know, even some uh, huge, um, you know, outlets and, and shops, uh, they only accepted, uh, you know, credit. They said we don't accept debit. So for me, it was like, you know, an eye opening as well, where I I realized so that the dependency on the electronic transaction system is larger than I, I actually imagined. I, I, on, I only thought that this company is only dealing with, you know, cell phones, that's it. But in fact, lots of, you know, points of sale and lots of merchants, lots of uh, businesses um, are dependent on fast internet and fast uh, communication. And uh, I had uh, I had this uh, little um, saying that I had in, in, my, in my house, you know, that uh, some restaurants and some, some cafeterias they they have those it says we don't have wi-fi here talk to each other pretend it is 1995 and i think that all canada pretended it was 1995 last week right or, or beginning of this week so we pretended that nothing existed so nothing like no cell phone existed no internet existed so how do we survive in the world like that and you know, uh, Richard, so my clients often ask me, hey, Roman, we are talking about seceding from the banking system, right? So when we open banking policies, when we open uh, infinite banking concept, when we implement that, this, but still the policy law, when I take a policy law, where does it go? Can I use it to buy groceries? No, it has to be deposited first in a bank. So we, in fact, we're still using banks and then we're using banks for the convenience of debit so yes we do not uh, store our money we don't keep our money in banks but we rely on banks still for the convenience of debit for the transactions for the uh, e-transfers for many things that we find convenient and, and you mentioned also online banking right and there's lots of things apparently that may go wrong in our communication between the insurance company between accessing capital so the capital is growing right uh, no question uh, if even if we did get disconnected what happens to our capital richard still growing. It, uh, yeah it's still growing right but but still in order for us to access this capital there's lots of things that may go wrong and we wanted to kind of talk about uh, how do we prevent 
not having access to capital? How do we think in advance what we should do in order to not only have our capital working for us, but also have access to it when we most need it? There's lots of things that things that may go wrong. For example, you may be disconnected from cell phones, from internet, even to apply for policy. What do you need, Richard? Yeah, I mean, you you really, you what you need fundamentally, you need to be able to contact the life company and verify yeah, your identity. So yes. sometimes by the telephone that can be done, or you can, you can request a policy loan with snail mail. You know, you can send a courier to, with a loan request and send that in. Right. So there's ways of doing it without, you know, fit, you can use physical paper, you can send it in, you can do a letter of direction and sign it and mm -hmm. date it. And, you know, even if you need to have someone witness that document and send it in, so there's still ways to access the money from the life company. The life company has rules. They, they, they have a method that they do things. And, you know, before electronic transactions, before the internet existed, people were still taking policy loans and they would receive yeah. a check. They would be a check sent in the mail. That mm -hmm. was the, the way, the way things used to work, used to operate. And so nothing really is changing there. We're simply changing, you know, kind of the, the, it might be a little bit slower, but we're still able to get it done. And ultimately, that's really what uh, what matters. That's what we're what we're focusing on. That's what we're helping people understand. They have the ability to do it regardless. Uh, so statistically, 60% purchases in Canada are done by using credit or debit cards. So we are we are very dependent on using plastic nowadays, and very few people use cash. In our society so our society is moving towards you know uh, being cashless right so we are trying to kind of go away from using cash this is where we have some some digital risks right we have some risks of not being able to access our money not being able to access our cash so people say cash is king but uh you know right now very few people carry cash with them, right? So, but, but I see this happening when we see that we are very dependent and uh, the companies don't really support us as we want them to support us. Like for 100% of the time, we want to be online. We want to be connected. We want to be, you know, we want to have access uh, to those banks and, and their accounts and have access to our money. Even when we deposited a check in a bank, we want to have access to it immediately. I'll give you an example. So some of you may know that we just uh, came back uh, with my mom. She's Ukrainian. I, I brought her into Canada and we, we just opened, opened up a, an account for her with one of uh, big banks in Canada. It's kind of red bank. You may know what, what I'm talking about. And yes. we opened an account online. But when I went, so we just needed to go to a branch and then show her passport to just to confirm her identity. Guess what? The branch was closed because because of the fire that happened um, at the same street uh, one day ago, there was like a huge massive fire in Steinbeck, Manitoba. And uh, when the fire was down, all the businesses around uh, around that, that block was actually were actually closed for for a whole week just oh, because wow. of the smoke hazard, you know, toxic gases and stuff like that. Even just confirming your identity, not even I'm not I'm not even talking about accessing funds, maybe maybe challenging. When you when you rely on you know on system like like banks and so you want to have access to liquidity when you have it because guess what do the bills wait till you you access your cash no the bills have to be paid on time they have to be paid on the fifth of the month or the fifteenth of the month so we have to have this cash liquid ready somehow accessible even in the case of emergency you have to have access to cash. So tip number one, what I wanted to say is take your policy loans well in advance. We, we all know that we, we want to, you know, flow our expenses through our policy loans. Tip number one, take your policy loans well in advance. Give it extra time in order to have the policy loan ready when, when you need it. Uh, we know that the insurance company processes uh, policy loan requests within um, Three to five business days but it may take weeks right so sometimes when we have like outages like this you may literally need to send them a loan uh, request by by mail and then accept uh, sorry expect a check coming in by mail which may take two or maybe two and a half weeks right 
So, or maybe we can keep some cash at home and just to rely on cash because if we know how many bills we're, we need to pay, we may need to account for that. We may need to plan for that. We, need, we may need just to have cash handy just in case we need to pay those bills. Maybe just go to the Manitoba Hydro, whatever it is, and then just pay pay your, your somehow pay your bill on time, right? Or go to another branch, another bank, and then just to, so that I don't get, get hit by the NSF fee, right? Or something like that. So if I don't have cash. Yeah, you, you, you're right, Roman. And in fact, a really good thing for people to tune into on this cool. is uh, there, there's a, a great uh, webinar recording that was done a few years ago, but everything in it is very applicable to today. And it was done by Robert uh, Murphy, Dr. Robert Murphy and Carlos Lara. They are uh, two of the board of directors of the Nelson Nash Institute. And so they have a website called the Lara, uh, Lara Murphy, Lara-Murphy.com. And in fact, uh, I'll put the website link here in the chat uh, for everybody. They should be able to see that in the comment section. Um, this one goes directly to the spot that I'm referencing. And so they, they've merged everything to the main a website on infinitebanking.org, which is the website for the Nelson Nash Institute. And they did this a few years ago again, but everything that they talk about is 100% relevant to what, you know, this Rogers instance or some of the other economic uncertainty and concerns that people have. I mean, I speak to people on a regular basis that they are legitimately concerned. They're concerned about um, how governing bodies, how uh, global economies, how large multinational organizations are implementing structures and things that may hinder or create some kind of an issue with, with the currency that you're accustomed to. And so, you know, we, we see the advent of technologies like the different kinds of cryptocurrencies. Right now, those markets are in the tank as well. But the fundamental basis of how their design or what their 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 intention is, is around giving people an opportunity to separate from the system, much like are the insurance policies are. And so in this presentation, they talk a lot about what's called Exter's pyramid of collapsing values and where people, you know, you know, there's like this stack and where people it's actually inverted, where people go down towards, you know, typically things like gold and silver and precious metals that are physical in nature. And, you know, if I want a chicken to feed my family and I, you know, and I don't have chickens and I don't have pigs or anything like that, maybe I don't even have a garden. Probably not a bad idea to figure that out. Uh, one of the reasons <laughs> I moved to Tilbeck is because there's lots of fresh stuff I could just go get from a local farmer. Um, yeah. But, you know, I can, if I go to that local farmer, you know, if I don't have something of value that they will accept, I won't be able to trade. OK, so yeah. maybe I know how to fix lawnmowers and I can fix their lawnmower or maybe I have a skill that they need and we can barter over that. Ultimately, the currency that we use today in Canada, Canadian currency, it's it's bright blue and pink and various colors. This is all it does is it solves the speed transaction of how you and I might trade for goods and services. So, again, if yeah. I go to the car mechanic and I need to rotate my tires and do an oil change and get an air filter and fix my transmission, that mechanic will accept something of value. What he knows of value is the Canadian currency that he charges. But if I can add some other value, like maybe one thing that he really needs is he needs a way to market his build business and build a system that automates so he can reduce his cost of employed staff or or optimize the growth of his business. Well, if I can bring that skill set to him, perhaps him and I can create a new arrangement where I will provide services in trade for services. That'll take longer. But ultimately, everything that we do on a day-to-day -day basis transactionally, we don't see it, but effectively, that's what's happening. The difference is we're utilizing a currency mechanism that is well-known and consistent, consistent across the board that allows us to do that at lightning speed. And so talking about uh, Exeter's Pyramid of Collapsing Values, you know, Roman, you and I were talking about things like gold and silver. So, you know, here I have a... Canadian silver coin. Uh, it's a Canadian maple leaf coin. This one is a five dollar uh, coin. Uh, it's uh, ninety nine point nine nine percent pure. You can see a little, you know, quadruple nine on there. I have another one that uh, I also like. These ones they're they're good. These are an Austrian uh, coin. Again, very very similar kind of structure. Oh, nice. And is it, is it, so, is it silver? Uh, it is. It's silver. Yeah. Yeah. You bet. Yeah. These nice. are both uh, both silver. You actually should be able to see. It says. 
mm-hmm. silver on there. I don't know if the glare yep. can show it or not. But, you know, so I have these in, you know, in these little things here. These are a sleeve. And typically, I think this one's got 25 in it. And I can't remember. I think this one has 25 as well or 20. Uh, you know, so like myself and I know a lot of other people. I know a lot of clients. I have friends and colleagues. Well, they will have a, a format of bullion in some format where it's usually physical. Now, you know, Nelson mm-hmm. even uh, he would tell a story about this uh, back in back in the day. And although he was fond of this thing, it wasn't he recognized that it, it didn't matter in the same way that his policies mattered um, because he can't control the market price. But I don't have these things as really as an investment. I, I have these things so that in the event we have a short term currency related crisis, oh, people will go to the collapsing values and they will look yep. to find a way to conduct business in the short term period. Maybe it's a month two months, three months, six months, maybe it's one year as the world kind of figures its way back through and we get back to some, you know, whatever some format of normal is. Not unlike we've done through COVID, but just more in relation to how the currency moves through the marketplace. And so if I have enough of these in place, well, I can go and exchange it with a farmer and I can, maybe I can't get a whole cow, but typically in a situation like that, the value of these things also goes up proportionately because that value is based on a supply and demand. So the demand yeah. goes way up. And so the people mm-hmm. that have supply, what I can exchange this for today versus in a situation where the currency is not doing so great, what I might be yeah. exchange it for at that point in time might be a much higher value. Maybe this will get me a whole cow or it'll get me a quarter of a cow that I can put in my freezer and feed my family. So, you know, w- I'm not trying to suggest that everyone just run down to the your corner pawn shop and go buy a bunch of gold and silver, but... <laughs> understand that how you have money flow and if these are things you're actually concerned about you should be getting some education on what are some things that you can do to protect yourself uh, in that environment and the only thing i would suggest is that if you're going to go acquire something of this nature and you're going to be changing how you hold some of your currency what we're doing is we're moving it from canadian paper electronic currency into tubes of silver coins or gold bars or what like whatever that yeah. thing is that you want to use i mean gold bars are cool and all except like you know I'm, i've got a little remote here and if this was like a gold bar it's kind of hard for me to go down and just shave off some into a scale at the car mechanic and say okay is that enough you know meanwhile the car mechanic's looking at this gold bar i'm like no that's not enough you know i wouldn't want to be walking around town with this lugging uh you know 20 pound gold bar around right so yeah, yeah. Just, you know things to think about yeah exactly so yes gold is great it's gonna it's gonna real money it is divisible but it is not divisible to the point where you can you know chip away uh enough to buy uh, you know bread or to buy milk right so there has to be some replacement for gold or some 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 universal exchange for gold so that we use it and that's 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 how the banking system you know came to came to life and so having having gold and silver at home or having access to liquidity at home is also um, basically succeeding from banking system, right? Because you're not keeping that money in a bank where things may go wrong and you may not have access to it. And then the things that may go wrong, actually, not just not just, you know, communication outages. It's like uh, earthquakes, right? Or hurricanes. If if that if those hit and the pr- probability of, the, of those are actually pretty pretty high and uh, so we may also be cut out from traditional system where we have access to everything when we need it so yeah so talking about that uh, yeah I also have some some silver silver coins I may not not have enough because I have a big family so this one is particularly is this silver Canadian coin two hundred dollars and I have more of those I have I, I, I have just a couple of those coins just just for collectibles they were kind of bothering me, you know, when I uh, discovered the infinite banking concept for myself, because I realized this money isn't working, isn't growing in a policy. But after this happened, after the outage, after this craziness that happened, I look at it a little bit differently. I realized that I may at some point need, need to have access to it because, you know, it, it is it is what I need to to pay for stuff, right? At least this is my last resort. I'm not saying that everyone should do it. I'm just saying that we need to plan in advance 
for our future expenses and don't do you know last minute preparations for your policy loans uh, because you may have uh, you may have some delays accessing accessing money from insurance companies just plan in the future um, be wise give give it more more time just to just to have enough time in your plate to um, to, ha to have access to the funds. Yeah, and and you know, I mean, at present we don't have delays like that that we experience. But you know, the, the yeah. takeaway is, is that, you know, again, using the Rogers example, things happen, and you just want to recognize that it, it could take longer. And and further to that, you know, we always suggest that people should plan at least thirty days in advance of their need of capital. Anyway, we all know that things come up and you you know transmission goes on the car i mean that happens you didn't plan 30 days that the transmission would go on the car but you could use a line of credit or visa to pay the mechanic and then you can make your loan request and then you know make sure you're planning with enough time for these things to, to come in um you know another thing i think it's helpful to understand is you know just circling back to what we talked about receiving a check and snail mail meaning like you know you're waiting for Canada Post to deliver your letter to the life company. Hey, give me my policy loan. And you're waiting for them to truck it back on a horse or whatever back to your house. Um, and if you have a, you know, you have a check, it's also important to recognize that there, there are at presently anyway, some other ways that you might be able to cash that check. So you might be able to exchange, you could sign that check over to uh, some other places like Sometimes Endorsing. you can even go maybe to the, you know, let's say it was RBC that issued the check from from someone's from the account. You don't bank with them, but often you can go and get them to cash that check, mm -hmm. even though you don't have a uh, have an account with them because mm -hmm. they're the one that issued the check. So that's an option option. Sometimes you can go and do it at a retailer. So even like Walmart, some I've heard does that um, there's there's they'll do it with not every type of check, but pre-printed ones, payroll checks, government checks, cashier's checks. Um, you know, these are many of the types that they will do. And, and there probably is other retailers that would do that. Um, there's an option maybe that you could load funds onto a prepaid debit card as a possibility. Uh, you can go to a check cashing outlet. So kind of like the payday marts, payday cash loan type places. I mean, you're going to pay a fee for that. But if you don't want, if there's an issue where you're currently unsettled by what's going on in the traditional banking system and you don't want to go and insert more capital there, then there there are other ways if you recognize and be creative that you could go and still get that policy loan cash. Uh, so just to give you some context on, you know, getting people thinking about what what are some other options that we can use to still turn that policy loan value that's in a piece of paper into some kind of currency that we can work with yeah absolutely and uh you know what i love about also um, being a policy holder is that uh when this craziness happens uh the market may change the market may go down especially you know telecommunication sector may go down because of this market crash uh investors may panic also they may sell you know stocks and the beauty of it is that i don't really worry of the you know telecommunication sector going down because in my policy my cash value is going up regardless of what's happening in the stock market right because all the risk is with the insurance company so me being a policy holder i don't have um, risk of you know ups and downs of the market that's why um yes i may be temporarily um not able to have access to immediately to borrow from the insurance company. Maybe it will delay me a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks, uh, but that, that's fine. My, my capital is still intact. It is still growing every day, regardless of what's going in the world. Yeah. And I mean, it's you know, also, I mean, in, in comparison, I, I think about a contrast to that. And so people often, they think about their equity and their equity. When you hear the words equity, most people think about a house or their home they the brain usually jumps to home equity and yeah. a lot of times people don't realize that they, their equity is trapped inside of the walls of their mm -hmm. home and so even considering in many areas of canada we've had these rapidly sharp inclines in the real estate market and those real estate market inclines have been yeah they've been very very different like they've been very um uh changing and dynamic uh, over the course of the last period of time where people are sitting on much more home equity than they had previously they had before 
However, if that market shifts, so right now we just had a huge increase with the Bank of Canada, the largest increase, and in, I think it, they said it was about 20 years, a 1% increase in the overnight lending rate. Well, yeah. that's going to immediately reduce the buying power of any new purchaser, any new buyer. So if you're looking at mm -hmm. selling a home, um, you know, in that market, well, now the amount of people that could have bought your home at that price, boom, a whole bunch of them just got eliminated from the marketplace. So supply yeah. and demand, supply and demand. You have a supply of a house you want to sell, but the demand for who can actually, the amount of people that can actually close on purchasing the house for the value that you want just got obliterated. So these forces have a way of impacting uh, values in a real estate market. Mostly it's, it's a supply and demand situation, but the interest rate has a cost on borrowing and the payments of cash flow, the monthly payment situation. And so the qualifying criteria increases. And if there's not the income cash flow to support that, the amount of, you know, you you could buy this size of house, you know, yesterday and now or two days ago with the Bank of Canada increase. Now you can only buy this size of house. That's basically what's happened. So anyone that has a size of house that's up above here, the amount of people that are interested or want to buy your house, they might still want to buy it. They just can't close on it because the bank won't give them the deal. So recognize that that home equity it, it can be frozen and you don't control the size of it you can control your mortgage pay down but you can't control the value of the property whereas in the par whole life situation because of its structure because of its design because of its contractual nature and the bulletproof guarantees attached to it that thing is going up each and every day and you can't stop it the only thing that stops it is if somebody dies the insured person in which case you get more money than you put out in anyway <laughs> or if you voluntarily as the owner choose to collapse it that's like having that's like having a gold mine that you that you own and you know you all of a sudden walk over and you decide you know what uh i didn't actually get a chance to put my shovel in here and check and look for any of the gold i'm just gonna go ahead and i'm i'm just gonna close it all out and i'm gonna hand it over to somebody else you know like i don't think too many people would want to do that if you knew for a fact that you had the you had the reports you know the data that boom there's gold in that thing you know you don't want to mm -hmm. you know get rid of a gold mine that you you already have in your hands so that would be kind of my final thought and i mean ultimately it's important to have these conversations roman you bring a lot to this because of your your experience living in other countries outside of canada and so i think i, I love having conversations like this with you because there's things that you've gone through that you've seen your family members go through that I have not experienced. I have, I've had it, I've had it really good here. Being a Canadian my whole life, I've lived here my whole life. You know, I've had a wonderful and amazing life and I have not had, I know things like that happen in other nations and other countries. You hear about them, but hearing about it and experiencing them is different. So you being able to share your reference point with, with our listeners yeah, I, I just think it's really, really, um, uh, it's an amazing thing that you're you're volunteering to do that because your perspective adds a tremendous amount of value. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, and I just wanted to kind of also uh, finalize my my thoughts that hey, we just need to be prepared for the unexpected, um, you know, events. We just need to be a little bit uh, more aware of what's going on in the world where someone can just take a switch and put it down and turn off the lights. But the beauty of it is that our system that we are building, that we grow our families and businesses is growing regardless. We just need to have a little bit more time, potentially access in this cash. But hey, uh, to our, all our clients and our listeners, um, that's not a huge deal. So we are not, uh, you know, locked out of your money. Um, you you want to just rest assured that your money is still growing it is intact and insurance company has been through all of these crises and all of these uh, you know uncertain times for many 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 times during um you know decades and even centuries so we just need to plan for it we just need to be aware we just need to be ready be uh be prepared and be ready love it Roman, thanks again for doing this. This is great. Uh, to everyone who tuned in, I uh, hope you had an amazing uh, chat with us today. And we look forward to you tuning in again next time. Make sure you take a look for some of the other content that will probably be popping up on the screen here shortly for you. And as always, continue your journey of learning.